so she's a little off her foundation, but that's okay. That's not bad at all. There's a lot of rot on that corner. Still is. Uh, okay, so I've got to get used to the brake on that thing. It's pretty touchy. I mean, I think I'd do better if I was sitting down. I probably should have sat down and I got a little bit more control because you're not using your weight. Uh, I'll try that next time. Just need to, you know, be able to feather that brake a little more. Uh, but it's working fine. It's picking up good. Plenty enough, you know, strong enough. And uh, just what we need. We got it up here to where we can start working on it. Get these bearing caps all loosened up and everything so we can get this thing, make sure it's not any problems with it and get it unstuck. And hope like crap that that sonar's good. We don't know. We might pull it off next and check it. Uh, we can pull, the, pull it off with the slide valve and pull it off, pull the head off for the cylinder and see what it looks like. And that'll give us a real good idea of what, where we need to go, which way and how and how hard it's going to be. All right. All right, folks, here's the head. It's got numbers on the inside. That's funny, huh? So uh, we used the crane to pull the head off and here's what we got. So, bird nest of some sort. I don't know how it would have got in there or how. That's weird. Uh, so we got a little rust on the bottom, a little rust on top. Nothing that scares me yet anyway. So uh, I think we can work with this so far. If it don't look too bad under here. I don't know what kind of animal was in here urinating. That's a lot of the problem. It don't look like it don't look like they were. I mean, actually, no pits, nice and not bad at all. I'm more worried about the top now, but uh, I think it'll be alright. Just don't know how it done it like that. That's weird. Hmm. Looks like there's a, any kind of a hole up there. Let's pull this cover and see what it looks like. Well, no holes up top. I didn't know maybe if they had a a hole that was uh, supposed to have a plug in it and someone had taken the plug out or what, but I'm not sure why it's rusted up top like that. Unless it would be condensation hanging from the top. But I mean, I don't think it's, still don't think it's uh, a problem. I don't think it's any pitting. The cylinder's still nice and shiny over here. So I think we can get this one. So far, it looks good. Uh, we want to get it fired up. So I think now we're going to take the slide valve cover off and check it out and see how bad it looks. All right, we got all the nuts off and a couple of the studs and uh, we're definitely going to have to make a gasket for this side. I don't think this had a gasket and I didn't realize it. So we'll find out for sure. Machine surface, but you would think there would be one on it, but maybe not. So we'll get all this cleaned up, cleaned out, but we want to make sure it's all good. As you can see, there's some Mud daubers right there. I just can't believe a bird would come into that dark hole because there had to be no light there and build a nest. That's weird. Uh, you think they'd need some kind of light, but no. You know what do I know? All right, uh, I'm definitely not a bird and don't know nothing about. Them. So I think we'll sit this down and then we're going to take and uh, use the crane to grab this and just pick it up. Uh, a little too heavy to be playing with. Uh, it's got springs in there for the balance valve and uh, uh, don't know how much difference it is between a balance valve and just a regular slide valve, but I'm gonna learn. Well, there we go. Not a whole lot to a balance valve. Uh, this is the piece right here that pushes against it. And instead of having uh, just a single piece through here, it's got this on the outside of it. And I guess the spring's pushing in on it. So it just moves in the center of the two. A uh, little different, but I guess maybe it's more efficient. I don't know. I'm not real familiar with it, but anyway, uh, we are probably not going to mess with anything. We're just going to clean it up really good and just leave the timing like it is. I'm assuming the timing was good uh, because it was being run. So last time, you know, when it was taken down. So our main thing is to get everything cleaned up. And uh, now we can check the timing if we, you know, if we decide to, which, you know, sometimes... 
I sit here and say stuff, and then I go way overboard anyway. So we'll get it cleaned up. It don't look bad. I mean, it's not, you know, nothing rusty, real bad, or anything like that. That's what I was worried about. Uh, you know, there's a few little spots here and there, but nothing, nothing that would worry me at all. Uh, so everything's good so far. Alright folks, we come in here, or I came in here, and I loosened up everything. Uh, I loosened the bearing caps up, I loosened up these guys, uh, the valve train on the other side. She's customs up at the top now. Loosened these up and uh, oiled everything really well. And of course we hooked this bar on it. And picked up. It's rolling over. Still tight, of course, and of course it's going to be until we we get a you know a few turns on it. I'd love to. I wish I still had a tractor with a uh, a uh, flat belt on it. You know, try to get this thing to where we could turn it over and let it roll a while. But ah, that's the way it is. So. Anyway, we're going to try to bring the piston back down and see what it looks like. All right. We're seeing a little bit of dry. It don't feel bad though. A little bit of surface rust. We're gonna get that piston all the way to the bottom and then we're gonna oil it up again. I can't get anything in into the bottom unless I pull the cylinder off and I'm trying to keep from doing that. But it's not turning hard, so I'm not real worried about it. Actually, we're at top dead center right now. Or bottom dead center, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's bottom dead center, so I need to go ahead and clean it up where it's at. So that'll be one full revolution we've made. Looking good. It's getting there. We get it good and freed up. We'll clean up this shaft really well now that we've got it out. It's out as far as it's gonna go. So I got an idea, you know, it ain't gonna hold a packing, but so we'll probably have to make a rod for it before it's over with, but we may try to run it on air before that. Uh, maybe see if we can get it doing something anyway. I think she's a runner, or she's gonna be a runner without a problem. Uh, a lot of years, I can't remember what year he told me, but I'm gonna go back at the other video and look because I had mentioned it. I would normally in, in Year, you know, a few years back, I'd have never forgot that, but now I can't seem to uh, keep stuff in my head for as long as I used to, and I guess that's just the way it is. But yeah, we'll fill that back up with oil again, and that one's got a little left in it. We'll fill it back up again, just let it keep running. Put some more in this, blow it out, I guess. All right, all right, folks. First, let me apologize for not getting more video of driving this thing up the driveway I guess I should have gotten my wife out here to help me out uh, but anyway it is what it is uh, the crane handled it just fine uh, it bounced a little bit and was swinging a little bit that's why you seen I had it tied off to the front of the machine 
but uh, I actually brought it up backwards. I didn't, I wasn't any room really to spin it around without uh, chancing putting it over top of something that I didn't, you know, if it had fell, it would have tore it up. So, crane done really well. Uh, I actually boomed down once I got up here a little bit and uh, it handles it just fine. I've got to get a little bit better on the controls and I'm sure, you know, they need to be worked, you know, adjusted a little more and, and uh, worked with some, but I've got to tr tighten the tracks up. The tracks are loose as can be on this machine. But, you know, I didn't really get it to move and I was surprised that it drove up here as good as it did. Now, this all started, uh, and I, it's a farm up in Connecticut, and it's actually a, uh, uh, like a museum, you know, an agricultural museum. They moved a three or four cylinder, they had a three and a four cylinder, but they had a four cylinder Fairbanks Morris engine that was 22 tons, 44,000 pounds. They had a Northwestern crane there, and they had a, uh, an operator that uh, knew what he was doing, and his plan was what my plan was, and that was to pick and swing. In other words, pick it, swing it, sit it down, move the machine, pick it up, swing it, sit it down, move the machine. And he decided, just like I decided yesterday, to, to just drive it, and it worked out just fine. Now, I caught myself watching that video, and I didn't stop watching it. I watched it from start to finish, and I'm like everybody else, or like, a, oh well, not everybody, but I mean, a lot of people like to skip through videos. And especially when I'm in a hurry, or if I'm sitting in the truck just waiting on a, a record, you know, somebody to, to meet me somewhere to do a record call or something like that, I'll jump on there and just, you know, watch something, and I'm, I'm liable to skip through it. But I caught myself watching that entire video and really interested, and that's what got me started of wanting to get a crane to start with, because I figured it this way, uh, people would prefer to watch a video of me working on or picking up or assembling a steam engine using a antique machine than they would of me uh, doing the same thing using a uh, brand new wrecker or you know a new model wrecker or a new model crane or even an old forklift you know uh, this is it's really worked out so good for me because you know it, it's like everything else you get a crane and then you don't think you're going to use it that much and then I've used it on everything I've done. I mean, it's, uh, it's, you know, you get by without things. You know, I grew up without running water and done just fine. But once you got it, then you didn't want to get rid of it. You know, if they shut my water off, I'd, you know, I wouldn't uh, just go dig a well and start using buckets to get water out. I'd work on trying to get it turned back on. So, uh, what I'm saying is if you hadn't had it, you hadn't missed it, but I didn't have a crane and I didn't miss a crane, but if I got rid of it now, I think I'd miss it already. And uh, it's worked out really well. And I've, uh, you know, had a had a good time getting it out of the swamp and, and all that. And we still, we're still gonna paint it. And uh, just a matter of time here. And I think uh, I'll have Dominic cleaning on this thing the weekend. And I'm trying to line up as to whether we're gonna try to fix that small boiler which I'm probably going to end up doing, I mean, to be honest with you. Uh, or I was going to work on the air compressor some, the big air compressor. Uh, I probably need to do both, but I think I want to fix the boiler. I want to fire this on steam. I want to uh, see it running like it should run. And uh, I think this engine is going to be a, a really good engine here. And it's just a matter of time. I'll get some more video when we get ready to move this thing. I'll try to make sure we get a a good video of doing it. Uh, we're going to do a foundation and we're actually going to set it up, well, straight over that way, but uh, I don't know where over that way. But we're going to set it up over there and so we'll be picking it up, moving it again, and we'll be setting it on a foundation. And it's going to be a uh, brick foundation with concrete inside. Uh, I kind of like the looks of the brick under one, so that's what I bought. And we're going to clean this up and paint it. I hadn't figured out what color yet. Uh, it looks like it might have been a gray color. Uh, you know, I don't know for sure. And I'll check around a little bit and maybe we can find out. But but I think this is going to be a really nice engine. And I've got a lot of, of uh, nice oilers. I've had some people send me some oilers. And uh, I bought some. 
but we've got a lot of nice oilers we're going to get on this thing so this is going to be uh, a beautiful engine when it's together you know all, we're going to take any of the brass and copper and we're going to polish it we're going to set this engine up we're going to get the oilers on it and then i'm going to go in and dig four posts with a uh, auger i got we're going to use the crane we'll set four telephone poles up and then we'll put a roof over it and that way this won't be in the weather anymore and I did figure out 1974 was the last time this thing was rolled over. Uh, it was in a barn or a building until 1984. And I'm pretty sure it was a tornado, but I think it might've been a tornado that was spawned off of a hurricane. Cause when we have hurricanes through here, usually a lot of tornadoes come. So uh, I think that's what happened, but it tore the building down. And that's why this thing had set out. Now, 1974, I know for sure it has not been rolled over since then. But uh, I don't know how long before that it was, you know, that it wasn't rolled over, hadn't been moved. So uh, it looked really good. I mean, I'm really impressed with it. Cylinder's going to be just fine. I don't think we've got any issues there. You know, there's really not much of any pitting or anything like that in it. We've got more hardware store videos going on. Uh, I'm mining some stuff up that uh, I think everybody will enjoy. And, you know, if it's something that I... When I'm learning it, I'm sort of surprised about it or, you know, it's sort of amazing. Then I always figure it's something that everybody will enjoy. But, you know, I like uh, Mysteries at the Museum. I don't know if anybody's ever watched that, but that was a really good show. And what, uh, what, I'm, what the thing is, is just like uh, this air chuck. Let's take this air chuck, for instance. Okay, let's say this was in a museum. And I, I put a little note here that said uh, quarter inch air chuck and you walk by and you looked at it and you seen that paper and it said quarter inch air chuck. You say, yeah, that's nice air chuck. But okay, let's say that this was the air chuck that uh, was used that inflated the Hindenburg, you know, that pumped the gas into it that, you know, made it explode. You know, in other words, let's put some historical significance to that particular piece. That's what I like. Now, I put, try to put history to each piece I've got uh, you can't do it on everything because you don't know, but like this, you know, I'm, I found out that uh, Ridgeway, South Carolina, I think I'm, I'm in the middle of working with uh, uh, talking to the museum in Ridgeway and trying to find out some history because they don't have a historical society. They just have a museum there. Uh, we're trying to find out a little bit about it, but it was uh, Ridgeway Lumber Company was the name of it. and. They started in 23, so um, they probably uh, bought this new, I would say. But, uh, we're, but we're trying to get the history of it and history on it. The more we can get, the better off we are. And I'm gonna keep, you know, on file, on paper, history for all this stuff. And, uh, you know, as it gets going and uh, fades away, you know, at least something hopefully will be saved and maybe be learned. Uh, you know, we're we're wait, we're just waiting on the generation of people that want to learn. Uh, I haven't seen them here lately, but they they got to be coming. All right, so uh, I appreciate everybody watching, and until uh, next time, bye.